Whenever sharing a new hobby or skill set, question always comes up, where do I start with the tooling? Well, I'll tell you what, when it comes to hand planes, if you don't already have a wall that looks something like this, I really, really, really believe these are the planes you should start with. These are the Rally Planes by Tursa. And before we get into why you should start there instead of here, let's talk about why hand planes in a wood shop in the first place. Anyways, if you have a tool like this, table saw, and especially a planer and jointer, probably a fair bit smaller, but that's really what we think of when we think of hand planes, right? Flattening things. Probably have machines that already flatten things. Why hand planes then? It's called a hybrid approach to woodworking. Mark Spagnolo is probably most associated with hybrid woodworking, although I don't know if he really coined the phrase or not. Someone will let me know, let all of us know in the comments. The idea is using machines in combination with hand planes. And as a beginner, I think that is an especially really, really, really valuable way to begin woodworking because you're probably not going to be able to afford the pristine machines like a table saw that is dead nuts accurate and stays where I want it to be. Like the table saw I had for years, every time I cranked the handle to raise the blade up and down, it would move up to 20 thousandths of an inch out of the way. It was impossible to get good joinery out of that thing. And hopefully yours isn't that bad. But if you're starting, you probably have budget equipment, you know, budget table saw, budget planer, budget joiner that doesn't do super, super great work, maybe doesn't stay in alignment. If you're trying to make really fine work, what you need to do with those machines is get close to your joinery dimensions and then sing it home with something else because you can't trust it to stay there. You'll also notice that off machines, a lot of times you have uh, tooth marks from the tooth profile on your blades, which doesn't make for necessarily the strongest glue joint. So if you smooth these out, it's even better. And you can do that at the table saw, but a lot of times it's a lot faster to just do it with hand planes. You can see this isn't quite perfect. So we're gonna just bring it home that last little bit. Cause again, I could do a lot of test cuts and dial this in on my saw and I know it's gonna stay there. I've had saws where I couldn't trust that before and maybe that's where you are. That's where a very affordable hand plane can come in handy. And for joints like this, where you're working in a corners where a plane like the Raleigh G03 comes in handy, this is what we'd call a shoulder plane. Cause this is gonna let me get all the way into the corner. Whereas on most normal planes, the blade doesn't come all the way to the edges. If I plane with this, which I can, I can get a lot of it, but not all the way into the corner. So if I want that to match, I'm gonna have to use a different plane. So after some passes there, then I come in with the shoulder plane or do it all with the shoulder plane and make sure I'm cleaning that up. And you can even kind of tell I went a little long. So once I glued this up, uh, instead of using a shoulder plane, I could use something like the 105, the one-handed plane to even plane the ends of the boards to bring them in perfectly flush. And even if you're not necessarily doing joinery, let's just say I was doing pocket holes or something, and even holding these flush here, I can tell they're not perfectly milled and I have a little bit of a lip, really easy then to come in with a hand plane afterwards and smooth things up or sand. The issue with sanding, when you're trying to sand things smooth like this, is the sandpaper likes to eat equally. Even if I just want to remove material from the end of the board, it's still going to eat from the other board. So I end up with divots. Oftentimes you normally see professionals switch to hand planes or other tools that reference in order to smooth things up instead of using sanders to smooth things up because the sander is kind of indiscriminate. Anywhere that grit's touching, it's scratching and cutting. And so while this would look and feel kind of smooth, if you really touched it or got close, you're gonna notice that there's a divot there. And if you're using a natural finish, it's gonna show if you're painting, paint hides things like that pretty well. That's an advantage of using hand planes over say a sander. Another place I really like to use hand planes is on the edge of boards. Uh, we tried, couldn't really get a good shot of it on the camera, but there's a bunch of circular saw marks on here and scratches that I need to get rid of. And if you've ever tried to sand the edge of a board, you know, you often like round over the edges, stuff some, it's, it's a real pain in the butt. So I normally like to hit those with a hand plane. Oh, should dial this down to a less aggressive cut which is really easy on these and just a few passes. And I won't need to hit this with any sandpaper and it'll be ready for finish. And a few passes were down to these papery wisps. Look at that, that's really, it's 
quite thin. And speaking of planing edges, here's another example that can be really dubious for new beginners, doing your panel glue up. So I want these two boards to come together and I don't want, you know, gaps or a big glue line here. I want these to come together really nice. Another example on you know, some less beefy wood that might be more atypical would be these nightstands I just finished. So this is a solid wood panel and it's just a really, really nice together glue joint. Now on budget equipment, budget joiners, budget table saws, inexpensive table saw blades, it's really hard to get a rip line that's ready to go right to the clamps. It's going to look this good, but it's quite easy to get with a hand plane. Again, unless I was doing a really short board like this, I wouldn't use a one-handed plane like the 105. I'd go up to something larger like this to 60 and use it where I'd use a jointing plane. Just depending on your preferred method of work, what I do is after you come off the joiner or table saw, before you glue up, I would line those boards beside each other to see how close they are and if they look good, perfect. Or if you just wanna sing at home and make sure you get rid of any marks and you're really ready for that glue surface, give it a few swipes anyways. And because planes are kind of self-indexing, remember, you've got these two big flat surfaces on the bottom and this blade is only gonna cut the high part. So after a few passes, it's gonna bring itself too flat. That's kind of the magic of planes. And I've got a full length pass down the whole thing. I know I have a really flat, ready to go board. And if I do that to my other board, I know these are gonna sing together super nice. And I'm not gonna worry about gaps and bumps. It's a really, really, really bad idea to try to overcome bad milling technique with clamping pressure. You're just always gonna end up regretting it. If, if your machines aren't dialed in or can't be dialed in, can't be trusted, Hand plane is a really good way to overcome that to make sure you still have super, super great glue lines. But now that we've kind of talked about why you want to use hand planes, let's talk about why specifically I think these instead of those. Like everything in life and business, it comes down to time and cost. Speaking of cost, you're thinking you're just talking up all this stuff because they're paying you. No, they're not. Well, you're talking it up because you got them for free. Yes. They did send them to me. Uh, they asked me to try out one and I loved it so much. I asked for two more so I could do this video because I believe in value. I have other planes that aren't up here. These are just the ones I use a lot. I don't need any more planes. I'm doing this video because I really do think there is a great value for you here. The beauty is it takes no time to learn how to use these. This lever adjusts your blade depth and how big of a bite you're gonna cut, okay? And it's the same on all of them. So if you know how to use one, you know how to use them all. I can flip this piece off and my blade comes out and that's it. When I put the blade in, it indexes. So it's always parallel and straight and how it needs to be. The only thing I would have to worry about is how deep of a cut I'm taking. And when it gets dull or worn out, you can turn these around, they're double-sided, or just put in a new blade. Why is that so amazing? Well, these are beautiful and they're fun. They're more traditional. I think these are really cool looking too. But the North style adjuster and everything, so you need to make sure that your frog is dialed in right. Uh, you've got to sharpen your iron, which is a whole skill set. And then there's all the controversy. If you just do a primary bevel, do you do a secondary bevel? Or are you one of those guys who add a tertiary bevel? You know, how is um, your chip breaker set? Is it in the right place? Is your chip breaker flat enough? How much of a gap do you leave? That's before we've even installed all the parts. And then, you know, when you got it, didn't you did you flatten the sole? Is your sole flat enough? And even with sharpening too, then we're talking you know, do you camber your ev edges? Do you keep your blade parallel? Do you like to offset it? And then when you realize you're taking a little bit too deep of a cut and you need to back things off, you learn about backlash and threads and what a pain in the butt it is to like wiggle direction and how you better nail it as you go, which is not any criticism on traditional planes at all. Obviously, I've got several of them. I enjoy using them. You've seen me use them in my videos. But when you're just in your shop trying to make stuff, it's about what gets you to the finished project the fastest. One of the issues with woodworking, as, as I said in the beginning, is it's not just a matter of learning how to actually make things. You have this added skill set of having to like learn your tools. So you're always kind of torn between, is it that I don't know the right woodworking technique or that I just haven't learned my tools or how to set up my tools? So it's like, I can't even get to trying to practice the technique I want to use yet because I haven't learned my tool well enough to try the technique. These remove all that. Besides the expense of the plane, any of these planes cost less or the same as all the other planes. I have. And we haven't even touched the needs for sharpening and then sharpening jigs because you're only as good as your sharpness, let alone setting up a, a, a traditional plane. Just getting your iron sharpened and homed 
is its own process and skill set. But when for the same or less money, you can get something that's ready to go, this QR code takes you to a few minute video that shows you everything you need to know about these planes and it's on each of them and you can be up and running, that's gold to a beginner. And I'm all about that because my channel is all about lowering or destroying barriers to entry. And if you're a long time viewer, like hearing me gush about hand planes uh, and the virtues of them, it might be a little surprising. But a reason why I haven't before is it takes so much time. Like if you just get in the shop in evenings and some weekends occasionally, and it's pretty precious, it's hard for me to tell you, hey, you need to take several of those weekends, put off any projects or anything and just invest all the money in some planes and if you're on a tight budget they need to be old ones that you need to restore so you got to learn how to restore them and you need to take the time to restore them and then you need to get some sharpening stuff and you're probably not going to be great at sharpening by hand so you should probably spend some money on a nice jig to make sure you can get consistent results if you don't want to spend even more time learning how to do it by hand that is a very valuable skill to learn then figure out your technique but you're also going to be in this battle of wondering is it my setup technique issues my actual hand planing issues or my sharpening issues that are stop preventing me from getting the results I have. That's why I haven't is because that is really tough, but these products remove all that. The only con that I don't really think is a con, but I know is gonna come up is, well, how long do the blades last? I've had these in my shop. I've been using them for weeks and I'm still on the primary cutting edge. And they do have different blade options. Most of these have carbide blades that are available that are even stronger and should last even longer, but they're very affordable. So I would imagine like if you do the cost breakdown for what it costs to get a sharpening setup and a good sharpening jig would probably be years of blades for most hobbyists or beginners. So that's not really a con, it's just a little bit of a cost of doing business. But so far the blades have lasted me a really long time. I've yet to kill one. So if I twisted your arm and you're like, okay, Caleb, you got me. Uh I, I wanna try it now for whatever reason. Which one do I get? Do I need all three? You don't need all three, but I feel like if you do have the three of these, these pretty much cover everything you're probably gonna need a hand plane for until you start getting into really specialty ones. We already talked about the shoulder plane a little bit. So anywhere you need to get up against tight corners, that's what this dude's for. And this is the smaller version. They have a larger one too. And there's one with a bull nose, but uh, I recommend you start with the one with the blade in the middle. The idea with the bull nose is that really lets you get right up into corners, but just use a chisel for that because otherwise you lose the front reference surface and that's valuable. If you do a lot of like rabbits and lap joints or half laps and you want to sing, bring those home really nice, that's where this dude shines. If you're just generally um, breaking edges, so you want to put a chamfer, you know, on things or just flushing up where joints or boards come together and you want them to be nice and, and, and crisp, block plane. Let's say if where you're really struggling is with your long edge grain glue ups, you know, making your panels and you're just struggling in the milling process to get those close enough, you want to be able to really bring those home. That's where a longer plane like this 260 comes in to get your jointing done. You can do that with a smaller plane. It's just a lot more difficult and you will want to put those boards together, find the high spots where they're touching that you need to bring down and then just work those. Nice thing about a longer plane is with a longer surface area, it can reference, it's not going to follow the imperfections of the board as much, it's gonna skate over them better. Whereas this one, if you know, you're know you inconsistent, this can kind of ride the hills and valleys. So if that's where you're struggling, start here. That should inform you where to start. And once you get to where you have all three, you're gonna be set. Anyway, that's my time fanboying out on this. If you're the kind of person who likes to like and follow and leave comments and subscribe and share videos, thank you so much for that. It helps and it goes a really long way. If you're not, that's cool. I am appreciate that you joined the journey. I hope you learned something, were inspired, or at least a little entertained until next time, make time to make something. Are you recording yet? You've been recording all the time, haven't you? Okay. That was way dustier than I thought it would be.